Greetings from Jim and Debbie Lehman and Wellspring Israel, from our home to your home. Shabbat Shalom. May you enter into the presence of the Lord and his joy and peace. So we're going to light the Shabbat candles this evening as a prophetic act of welcoming in the presence of our God. And as you go get your candles right now, let me thank you for subscribing to this channel. Absolutely. And we are honored for that. Mm -hmm. Do us a favor and, and support us by clicking the notification button. Right. And also by clicking the like, uh, the like because um, that way YouTube understands that more people need to see this teaching. And you can be a media missionary and share it with your social media platforms also and we are honored that you've chosen to listen to our teaching tonight thank you so much well shabbat is all about blessings so around the shabbat table tonight which is the family altar it's a time to turn to one another and just bless the lord and thank the lord for your family being a blessing in your life and you know if your children or your grandchildren are not around your table tonight you can still enter into a time of prayer and thank the Lord for them and ask that God would bless them with his goodness and his favor, that his presence would go before them and that they would walk in their divine assignment. We do teach about the day, do we not, Jim? That's right. And that our day has a frequency, a sound. Our day has a voice to decree and declare the things of the Lord. Our day has an assignment. And prayer will focus us and prayer will set us. So around the table tonight, do not forget to enter into a time of prayer where you bless those around you. So are we ready? Let's light the candles and enter into Shabbat. Now, I have two candles for our family. If you are single, you have one candle which represents the Lord covering you. Oh, the Lord has us. So we're going to enter into prayer. Blessed art thou, O God, King of the universe, who sanctifies us by his word and commands us to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy for your covering, for your protection, for your provision, but for your son, Jesus Christ, whose blood is applied to every area of our lives and to, for the Holy Spirit that comforts us, that leads us and guides us. We come into your presence with thanksgiving. We, we come thanking you for all that you've done, but all that you're going to do. And we bless and honor you for the provision, the protection, and for the miracles of Shabbat. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we want to talk to you tonight about the biblical month of Chesvan. We're in that month right now. It's the eighth month uh, from Passover, which is the first month of, mm -hmm. the, of God's calendar. And eight, of course, is the number of new beginning or uh, revelation. Sure. Uh, come to its uh, fullness of revelation. And we know that there's a tribe of Israel that goes along with or corresponds with every one of the months in the biblical calendar. Right. And this month is the tribe of Ephraim. And Ephraim. Manasseh. The tribe of Manasseh. It's okay. It's Last a, month was Ephraim. Okay. I, I this, am all messed this up. This month is Manasseh. Oh, the yeah, tribe. you're right. <laughs> that's the tribe that's represented this month. And why are they important? Well, because their name means to leap forward. And this is the month to move forward with God. I'm covering for you, babe. I've got you. And you know what? Getting My thought was on Ephraim because they were idolaters and I, and I got them mixed up with Manasseh. Well, that's okay. It's easy to get things. So Manasseh confused. was the second born son of Joseph, right? Oh, Jim, I think Manasseh was the first born son and Ephraim was the second born son. And you're getting me all off on this. Somebody comment on that because you, we're both having we're a both brain ha freeze. Okay, let's talk about. So we're talking about Manasseh. Let's talk about Manasseh. Manasseh was a tribe that uh, wh whose name was to forget the past and leap forward. And I believe he was the firstborn son of 
uh, okay. Joseph. Okay. But the blessing went to Ephraim. Now, Manasseh was a, a warring tribe. They were fighters. And they showed up at some key times in God's word. Now, one of the times they showed up as a tribe was with Gideon. You see, Gideon was a part of the tribe of Manasseh. That's right. And God found Gideon and said, you know, and gave him an assignment of warfare and to tear down his father's idols. So we know that Gideon through that process was obedient. But the tribe of Manasseh being a warring tribe show up um, to uh, in to, battle, but show up for Asa, King Asa. Well, before they, yeah. they showed up for David uh, to fight. Oh, at Ziglag. At Ziglag. Oh, that's right. They fought the enemy at Ziglag with David. They became David's mighty men. Yeah. They also fought. Uh, they also were there at da David's coronation in Horeb when he was anointed king uh, of Israel, and so they were considered to be a part of David's mighty men. Right. Okay. But then another place Manasseh is mentioned is in uh, the is Israel's history of the kings that were godly kings. And there's a group of them, Asa, Jehoshaphat, uh -huh. Joash, Hezekiah, and Josiah. And Asa was the first one mentioned. And he was mentioned in uh, two revivals. He was mentioned in Second Chronicles 14 uh -huh. as the first revival. And then we're going to talk about the second revival also, which we find is in um, the second revival was found in, in Chronicles 15, second Chronicles 15, one and 15, uh, three through six. Uh, so second Chronicles was the second revival of Asa. OK. OK. Now, during uh, the first 10 years of Asa's reign, he enjoyed relatively peace. And he used that time to bring the nation back to God. Second Chronicles 14, one. So listen to this. Asa wants to do right in the sight of God and peace was in the land. Isn't that something that tying up together of when we walk in God's um, divine purposes and we return to God, peace also comes. So we're seeing that. And we lead with big, biblical values. He did. He led with biblical values and the tribe of Manasseh was there. But during that time um, of Asa's first revival, there was the tearing down of idols in the land. So in the first revival, you see Asa return Israel back to God as a nation. And they returned not only in their worship, but it also played out in how they tore down false idols and altars. Well, it says in, in the first, land. It says in First Kings fifteen that they went from town to town and removed all the altars and high places of worship dedicated to foreign gods. Oh my goodness! Can you imagine that? I mean, God only wants revival in the land. He wants revival in our heart. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But isn't that something that to bring about the cleansing of the land, there has to be the tearing down of false idols, false mindsets, the mindset of man that is contrary to the word of God. So revival is the church being awakened. Well, that's, okay? yeah. The revival is the church repenting of their idolatry of thought mm -hmm. of theology of doctrine and coming into an awakening of what god word has for the body of christ right now restoration is when the church moves into the secular world the uh -huh. culture and society and impacts the culture society for christ oh amen and is okay. that is that not eat it needed okay so asa took some dramatic steps spiritually okay cleansing repentance and cleansing and god blessed with peace now this peace enabled him and the nation to be strengthened the kingdom to be strengthened so he fortified the land during that time and he built up the army and that was important because 
there he even though there was victory in the land even though they had returned to god there was still warfare mm -hmm. he still had to fight and to um, fight for his nation to stand strong with God. So when the enemy came against them, he so had a mighty let me battle ask, let and me, a mighty army. Let me ask you a question. When you receive Christ mm -hmm. as Savior and Messiah, you will tell people you got saved, and they will say, uh, what were you saved from? I didn't know you needed to be saved from something. Well, we were saved from sin. Right. That's right? what I thought but we were saved not from, but saved for, mm -hmm. to be a soldier and a, a disciple in the Lord's army, to fight for the kingdom of God, to fight for right, uh, to fight and change the structures of man that is based upon the fallen nature of this world. Now, Asa, who had strengthened his army and strengthened his land uh, had to fight a major battle. And it was an army from, uh, I think if you read it in second Chronicles 14, it was from Ethiopia, from Ethiopia. And a million, it man? was a million man army. That's a large army. And they had 300 chariots. They had a force close to twice the size of Judah and Asa called upon God for help. And victory is given. This is Second Chronicles fourteen nine through fifteen. Okay, and the Ethiopians were chased away at Gerar, and the Philistine cities surrounding Gerar were also destroyed, allowing the army of Judah to capture and carry off vast amounts of plunder back to Jerusalem. Now, just think what was insurmountable. A million man army. They were out manned and uh, out. Um, tool. They didn't have the warfare machine like the other army did. They were, it was like an insurmountable odds. But Asa turned to God. Asa turned the nation to God. And God not only showed up and gave them great victory, there was great plunder. Let me give you a New Testament passage that examples this. It's found in Acts chapter 11. When Peter has to go back to Jerusalem from uh, Caesarea, where he ate and introduced the, the centurion Cornelius and his household to Jesus Christ. They were God-fearing. They, they worshipped God uh, of Abraham, Isaac, mm -hmm. and Jacob, Hashem. They worshipped him, but they didn't know Jesus. And God had to give Peter a trance of showing him Right. that the Gentiles were not unclean or unkosher. So he goes to Jerusalem. Now the point there is he had to have a mindset change because he was living his life for Christ based mm -hmm. upon the law oh, yeah. and not upon grace because God's intent was just not yeah. to save the Jew, but the Gentile. Look right. at Ephesians chapter 2. His intent has always been to save nations, to save cultures and society and individuals and family units. So it was a mindset that God had to do with Peter to go to Cornelius' house in, in um, Caesarea and present the gospel, and they were baptized, and they were saved, and they were baptized and sealed with the Holy Spirit. So now he goes back in Acts chapter 11 and has to tell the Jerusalem church about this, and they ask Peter the question, are you telling me you actually went into a Gentile's house and you ate with them? Because that was forbidden. That was unclean. You cannot do that in that day. Jews did not have anything to do with Gentiles. And Jews thought unless you were circumcised, you cannot have be a part of, of the, the New Testament church, which was the early church uh, the, of Messiah, of Christ. Okay, And so they were questioning this. So God had to do a change mm -hmm. of mind yeah. and a change of heart absolutely, to be able to pour a new wineskin into Peter because yes. God, Jesus said he cannot pour new wine, skin in, uh, new wine in old wineskins, mm -hmm. right? right? So he had to do this miracle in Peter's life and change his thinking just like Asa had to do with Israel. Yes. Okay. Well, well Asa reaffirmed Israel and Ace, uh, the king reaffirmed their commitment to God, their covenant with God. That's in Second Chronicles 15, 12 through 15. Listen to the covenant. Then they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord, 
the God of their ancestors with all their heart and soul. There's a mindset change. They agreed that anyone who refused to seek the Lord, the God of Israel, would put to death, whether young, old, man, or woman. They shouted out their oath of loyalty to the Lord with trumpets blaring and ram's horns sounding. All in Judah were happy about this covenant, for they had entered into it with all their heart. See, the mindset changed, the heart changed. They earnestly sought after God, and they found him. Listen to that. They earnestly sought after God and they found him and the Lord gave them rest from their enemies on every side. The Lord did great and mighty on their behalf and they were victorious in battle. They received the plunder and the provision and he gave them rest and peace in and watch the land. this in the second revival oh yeah they That's continue awesome. this purging mm -hmm. the land mm -hmm. of idolatry mm -hmm. okay so you find this in second chronicles chapter 15 but idolatry was showing up in the families right yeah now it All was right. in the family so they cleansed the cities but it was still in the in the families in even the families. in ace's family his <laughs> his grandmother was the queen mother mm -hmm. and she had erected an Asherah pole uh, so that the prostitutes could come and worship mm -hmm. uh, in idolatry and in immorality. And well, he actually yeah. tore the pole mm -hmm. down and he actually removed his grandmother for bringing the queen. Well, that Asherah pole, it was an image uh, set up for worship of the fertility God. And God will not share his worship. His worship with any false god. And Asa took the leadership, not only of the nation, but he took leadership in his home, uh, well, in his, in his bloodline, own, in, his, in the bloodline. So yeah. there in Second Chronicles chapter 15, mm -hmm. verse 7, there, there is a man named Azariah, and he advises King Asa for five years to double his efforts in removing idols and immoral practices throughout the land and cleaned out and restored worship to the mm -hmm. Lord's temple. So this is a five year period. This would be considered the second revival of Asa. Right. And so we are watching, and I believe seeing a revival taking place in our land. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna share something with you back to Acts chapter 11, because we I just told you the story. So when when Peter goes back and tells the, the circumcised Christians or Jews mm -hmm. that he ministered and there was a great outpouring. In fact, mm -hmm. we know that, that what happened uh, there was an amazing story. And so what happened was um, they received the blessing. And instead of criticizing Peter, now this is the Jewish believers, they, they, it says in verse 18, when they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God saying, then God also granted Gentiles repentance of life. Now, what happened was from there, they began to send out people across the Asia Minor. And we pick it up that they went to a place called Antioch. Now, Antioch is the first place where the church is called Christians. Okay. The first place and there was a great revival that took place in Antioch and so we see what happens is God begins to bless the Hellenist in Antioch now Antioch is a is 300 miles north of Jerusalem it is a town in Turkey and at that time there's half a million people it was a banking town it was wealthy it was like the church at Laodicea they were wealthy. They didn't think they needed anything, but it right. was also a very immoral town. They worshiped, I think, the goddess Daphne there, and they had a temple there, and there were temple prostitutes, and there was all kinds of orgies, and, and they were sacrificing babies and all that kind of thing that took place. And But yet there was a revival in Antioch, and now Antioch is still in Turkey, but instead of 500,000, it has about 3,500 in, in uh, its population. So we see here when the news came about Antioch, they sent Barnabas there. 
And Barnabas was the one right. that sold everything from his hometown, okay, and gave the money to the apostles so they could minister to the needs of the New Testament church in Jerusalem after the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. Now, let me get to this. So Barnabas goes and he finds this revival taking place. And it says, when he had came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all with the purpose of heart, and they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. These would be Hellenistic. They, that would be Gentile believers. They were added. There was a revival that took place. In the midst of the revival, mm -hmm. Barnabas remembers there's a man called Saul, now Paul, who lives in Tarsus. And so he, he stops. He says, I can't give me a few days. I need to go and find Paul and come back because he needed Paul. Now, Paul had been in Tarsus 14 years. So that was 14 years earlier when God confronted him on the road to Damascus. And he he was waiting upon God and being taught. In fact, he was in the desert for three of those years where Jesus himself discipled Paul. And he was there 14 years. Now, many of you may be thinking, how long do I have to wait for God's promises to come true? Yes. How long do I have to wait till I see revival in my city, in my household, right? Mm -hmm. And so there was a great outpouring among the Gentiles now and Antioch was this city. And so a Barnabas goes and gets Paul. Right. And it says, verse 26, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that the whole year. Right. So they were there the whole year with the church mm -hmm. and taught a great many people. And the disciples mm -hmm. were first called Christians in Antioch. Now, I'm, I'm just going to close with this. That revival lasted one year. Mm -hmm. That was not a six-week revival. No. That was not a two-month revival. That was a year revival. Mm -hmm. And we read later in Acts chapter 11 that there was a man that prophesied. One of the, one of the uh, people from Jerusalem, one of the Christians from Jerusalem came up to see about it, and he prophesied. He prophesied yeah. that there'd be a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And you can read the rest of Acts 11 to find that out. My point is, this is the month to cry out for revival. This is the month to cry out for awakening. Absolutely. And, and the thing is, is just as the example in Chronicles with Asa, the first and second revival, there was not just the cleansing of the land and the pulling down of the idols and the land, but then there was the pulling down of the idols and the generational strongholds, the pulling down of the idols in the family. And so God is calling not only our nations back to him, but he's calling our families back the, the, to God, I think the point, to recovenant. I think the point I want to make about Asa and the, the tribe of Manasseh in the month of Chesvan is they had to warfare for revival. They did. That's they, what had, they, they had to yeah. warfare to pull down the mm -hmm. idols of their family. That's right. The idols of the land, the idols of the culture. And yeah. this is a season when we should be warfaring through worship, through prayer, through intercession. So remember, 5785, when you look at the Hebraic uh, letter, hey, remember it was the speech, our speech, and um, our thought life. It starts with the thought life and then speech. All and right. the yod would represent the hand of God in action. So we are to think the thoughts of God. We are to speak and declare his heart of revival over the land and in our household. And then there must be action. And that's warfare. But what does God say? My hand will be with you. My hand will be upon you and with you when we covenant with God and he will fight our battles. He will give us strategy on how to pull down the strongholds, not only in our nations, but in our families, in our own lives, so that we experience revival, renewal. And isn't that 5785, this, the breath of God? This is going to date me, and I apologize for that. But I think of that revival song, I went to the enemy's camp, and I took back what he stole from me. Sure, So yeah. this is that season. This is this month. 
but we got a warfare for it. That's right. If you're not in warfare, you're going to be in warfare either with your family, with people at work, with people in this nation. Well, if, if, if God doesn't light your fire, your wood is wet. Isn't that what you said? Yeah. Right. So if you're walking with God, there's going to be warfare because he's going to demand uh, a response and action and follow through in our lives. If this has been a blessing to you today, please do us a favor and comment uh, when you watch this uh, yeah. teaching and share it with uh, your social media. Help us grow our channel. We just want to teach Jesus and lift up the name of Yeshua, King Jesus. And again, we are very honored that you've chosen to listen to us. We love you. We appreciate yes. you. And we will, we will uh, talk to you next Friday night. Uh, and we honor you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I call you blessed in all your household.